Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. From Harlem in New York City, with the most corrupt mayor we've ever seen, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Albert Reynoso. You know what he... What? Where is he? No, there you are. Right oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at your screen. That... that. Mm. Did you cut your beard short again or something? No, I just I just trim it every week. Yeah, keep it down to that same length. Mm -hmm. Mine's yeah. pretty well grown back. You remember it got all chopped had, up. Yeah, you had the the bottom was gone there. So. Yeah, the bottom was gone because what happened was you know I, I I'm getting older and I make mistakes and I usually take the I remove the trimmer and then I use the blade part and and just tighten up everything right yeah. and i just went boom and i cut a, a nice swath right into my chin well it looks so good, i only but... had one choice and that was to cut off everything from here down and grow it back so if you had the hair i i like the mustache only look because you had that for many years with that snarling you know with the mustache yeah but without without the hair, I think you look better with the uh, what do they call this? The goatee. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the Van Dyke. Well, I it? would have more than that. I would do what you do, except that out here, I have a or here I can't remember where I have like a bald spot. Uh -oh. It just nothing grows, so I have to really grow it out in order for it to cover that area. Yeah. Well, why don't you give it a shot? Let's see what it's like. Well, I did. I started, and I just, it doesn't grow as fast on this side, on the sides here. Yeah, but let it let it go, and then, do you have a trimmer? Just a trimmer? Oh, I have a trimmer. Yeah, well, let it go, and then after about a week and a half, just trim it all down, and you get this. Look at how beautiful that is. Huh? You know, I, I, well, this is still not where it was. I think it still needs a little more. Let it all grow. Let's see what, Let's see what you got there. I think the fans of Alex Bennett are clamoring for that. The fans of Alex Bennett are clamoring Listen, for that? Grow that beard. Grow that beard. Grow that beard. Grow that beard. That's okay. right. Mind your own damn beard. I'm looking for my soda. I need a little liquid here. Right, I'll join you with that. I got my, my what do you, Walmart. Do you have shirt. your Walmart? Yes. When were you at Walmart? This morning. Just an hour or so ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Right. What kind Everybody's of liquid? What kind of liquid is that? This is a, a, a Diet Mountain Dew, I think. Diet I Mountain Dew? Yes. You know, that's what I should be taking. I need caffeine like that. You know, I'm it's just... Very, I'm, it's very, very tasty and you don't get fat, but probably I have a bad uh, cancer going on in my liver or my spleen or one of those things. But, you know, sometimes you got to have what you like. Yeah, I never... Did you ever like Dr. Pepper? I love Dr. Pepper. Really? In, in fact, when we were in, when we were in uh, Walmart this morning, I bought a two-liter bottle of Dr. Thunder which is the Walmart version of Dr. Pepper <laughs> <laughs> and a two liter bottle of diet, whatever they call it. Uh, I don't even know what the Mountain Dew version is, but they have their own version of that as well. Well, you know, what? I've never I'm been able to Dr. Figure, Thunder later. I've never been able to figure out, and I may be nuts about this, but I've never been able to figure out exactly what is Dr. Pepper. Is it like plum or what is that flavor? You know, I, I read about this recently. It's, it's not even considered a cola. No. It's considered a soda, not a cola. Right. Because cola, colas have to have, uh, I guess... Uh, has, to, has to have a cola nut in it. Cola nut, I guess, if there's a cola nut. Yeah. Uh, but the Dr. Pepper is a completely different thing. Or a goodly amount of cocaine, one or the other. You know? I don't know if you know this either, but Dr. Pepper is owned by Keurig now. Keurig owns Dr. Pepper. Keurig owns Dr. Pepper? 
You would think it'd be Pepsi or now Coke. People, or people those, who are listening to me say from California go, Dr. Pepper, who drinks Dr. Pepper, isn't that? But you go into the South, you go into Texas, yeah. and the number one selling soda is Dr. Pepper, or as they call it down there, Dr. Peppers. Right. And, you know, I'm not sure, but I also think that I read recently that Dr. Pepper is the number two selling soft drink in the country in front of Pepsi. Wow. So don't poo-poo Dr. Pepper or Dr. No, Thunder. in the South, it, it, it is king. It outsells Coca-Cola by a ton. I think even in, in, in Georgia, which is the home of Coca-Cola. How dare you say that? I don't think it beats Coca-Cola in Georgia. You don't think so? Okay. No, no. And definitely not in Atlanta. Yeah. That would be crazy. But Dr. Pepper, it's a great, it's a, you know, or Dr. Thunder, it's a great drink. But people or say. Mr. Pibb it, used to be Mr. Pibb used to be the. the Mr. The Pibb. Oh, Mr. Pibb. Yeah. I don't think they make Mr. Pibb anymore. Was that supposed to be the Dr. Pepper competitor? That was a competing Dr. Pepper, I think. But what is the, in Dr. Created Pepper? By one of the, what one is of it? it is it a plum soda or something? What's that? What is that fruit that's the base of it? I don't know. I th I always th equated it to like a black cherry or something like that. Really? Yeah. But I, I could. If it was black cherry, I would like it. But if you can't <laughs> figure out what that, you, you know, you can figure out what. Coca-Cola is, you know, it's in the name, the Coke yeah. part of it. Right. It's a Coca-Cola. It's a coconut, a, a cocoa nut cola, flavored cola. But with uh, Dr. Pepper, you have no idea what's in there. Well, Wikipedia knows it could be. It could be urine. It could be horse urine. It is not horse urine. Don't start spreading those rumors now. Oh, okay. Or otherwise, I'm going to get so it So you do Wikipedia. like Dr. Pepper? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And you're from New York. Oh, I've always liked Dr. See, Pepper. See, that's a strange thing, uh, being from New York, that you would even know Dr. Pepper existed. Oh, not at all, because in the 70s, they had that big uh, TV campaign. I drink Dr. Pepper and I'm proud. A part of an original crowd. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? You know, so. A pepper, too. Yeah, but it. they stopped doing that. It's almost like they gave up. But they don't have to do it if they're number two now in the country. Why should they advertise? Well, the reason you advertise, do I have to teach you this lesson? You were in that field. The reason you advertise is to make people know you're really still around. I mean, Coca-Cola never had to advertise if you think about it. But they did because they felt they had to constantly establish the product. They were very good at one of the best moves they ever made was during World War II. Mm -hmm. They opened plants in Europe so they could supply the troops with free Coca-Cola so that when the war was over, who was the number one soda in America? Right. You know, it was a very smart move. They were very good at it. But then you go back to the 80s and you look at one of the dumbest moves oh, ever. Oh, go ahead. Advertising a product that, w that, that there was no need for, nobody asked for it, and they completely changed their major product, the number one selling product, with nobody's consent whatsoever. It was a huge marketing uh, fiasco. And that was New Coke. New Coke, right. And First of all, was, why, why would you name it the same as your, as your great product? Give it another name then. Call it uh, co Coquitil. Co call it something. Well, that they kept calling Coke. it New Coke, but when they finally, after I think it was only three months, they gave the up the ghost on uh, right. on New Coke, and they brought back the old Coke. They came back with Coke Classic, and I think to this day it's still called Coke Classic. I don't think it is anymore. I think it's just called Coca Cola. Really? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've gotten. You know, I I, I, I like their uh, their uh, diet product, Coke Zero is. Wait, which one? They still have Diet Coke. I know, but Coke Zero they have is Coke the Zero best. As well. Coke Zero is like their. It just tastes just like the sugar product. It's pretty close, yeah. Pretty damn close. And it's it doesn't rot. Diet. It doesn't rot your teeth, you know. Well, that's debatable. I don't know whether it rots your teeth or not. Boy, uh, well, Coca Cola we know did rot something, you know. What they say? They used to have a legend that you could throw a nail into a. Uh, uh, 
a glass of Coca-Cola and it mm. would eat it away? Well, they used to say if you pour a Coke on your car, it will start to dissolve the paint. Is that true? Again, I don't know if that's true. No, I don't know, but it was certainly a, a, a rumor. You weren't going to try. I, I wouldn't do it on my car, no. Well, it wouldn't be hard to believe that that might happen. Although, why would that happen and yet you can ingest it? Well, I guess the acid's in the stomach. I see, know. when I was a kid, you know what my favorite was? You wouldn't even know of this. It was called Nesbitt's or of California Orange. I don't Soft know. Drink. I loved Nesbitt's. Best orange drink I ever had. I loved orange drink. I was a sun-kissed kid. I didn't know from You were me. a sun-kissed kid? Yeah. yeah. But there was another uh, orange drink. Uh, I think it was with an N also. Nehi? No. Nehi no, was an orange. No, no, no. I can't remember the name of it. Do they still make Nehi? I don't think so. And what was Nehi? Was that a cola? I think it was a fruity, a fruity cola of some kind. Some kind, yeah. I, I don't, I, that again, that's before my time. You had Nehi, and you had. I'm trying to think of the other ones you used to have. There were tons of them when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. You know, now was, everything's an energy drink. I was thinking that day about when I was growing up, because I was watching MSNBC. I was watching Velshi. Is about the only guy that's any good over there. I like Velshi. Yeah, he's terrific. Uh, Velshi, How come Velshi doesn't have his own show? What happened there? They keep screwing him over. No he good. Has, well, if you think about it, he has, if other people have like an hour a day, they're on five hours a week. He's on four hours a week. So, you know, he is working almost as much as they are, but he's not in the prime weekday slots. And he's, he's the go-to guy when anybody wants time off. But and he's I think better than he's, most I of the guys who need time I think he's off. the best they've got. I agree with you. I agree. He's one of the best. You know, who, who are some of the other best? Well, I like uh, Ari Melber. I think he's quite good. I, I uh, With Ari Melber, all I care about is I can tell what day it is by how much growth of beard he's got. Yeah. But I, I by like the end the of the week, he looks beard. like an old man from the hills, you know. So what? So what? But I don't, Melbourne's a little too, I don't know, professorial. Yeah, he can be. The only thing I don't care for is when he talks about rap music. Yes. I don't mind yes. it, but, but sometimes it's not the right time to discuss, you know, what's going on with the new Eminem album or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. But isn't yeah. Eminem a little bit old? I mean. Oh, you know. it just came out with a new album. It's quite good. I know he probably did, and it was quite good to you. But what about to the kids? You know, I was talking, I got this guy calls the show. You, you've you seen him, Mike Chisholm, and I decided to do what I do with you with him. And I did about three episodes with him. And and I, the, I started off the first one by saying, you know, you do this Letterman podcast. But I got to tell you, you get a kid who's 15 years old, he doesn't know who the fuck Letterman is. I said, and with every year that passes by, more and more of a larger swath of the of the generation won't know who he is or care who he is, no matter how entertaining he was. I mean, there were great people in the past like Jack Parr and so on. People don't even know Jack Parr existed and they're 50 years old. Right. Or you the know. guy that created that show. Oh, you mean Steve Allen? Steve Allen, right. Yeah. yeah. Who? Oh, they don't remember the first one. We talked about all of them. The first one. Who was the first one to do that time slot? I don't know, but uh, Steve Allen created the show, right? No. Jerry Lester did a thing called Broadway Open House every night for an hour and a half. I and, know. Uh, you know, nobody remembers Jerry Lester. But you're, st you're telling me that... P that Eminem is as little known as Jerry Lester? I would say to a certain group of kids today, Eminem is old old school. Oh, old school, certainly. But but he's, he's you know, it, that's like saying Prince is old school. People know Prince. They're not going to in a few years. Oh, I think they will. I, I think, think he's got it. I they, don't think they I, will. I think he's got a catalog of music that's that's certainly. I think he was phenomenal and stand the test of time. I think he was phenomenal, but there and are Michael people Jackson who are not too. going to know who Maybe he was, 
or care. Because the problem with, with, with at least kids in this country as they're growing up, they don't really care about the past. You know, I love the past. I watched silent movies, and I, I listened to music from before I was born, and my father played me music from before I was born, and I was always into what went on in the past. Most people aren't. Most kids aren't. They just uh, That's not the way they're wired. You, know? no, they're not. You, you like to grab onto the things from your time, but th th there is a, a resurgence of... Um, rock and roll and pop in the 70s and 80s with uh, younger people that that shows the staying power of that kind of music. Now, now you, you don't have the same thing for the 50s music and the uh, and the 40s music and 20s music. You don't have that. For some reason, there's some staying power in 70s and 80s music. Well, that, I that used to... Uh, when I used 90s music or the early 20, uh, uh, 2000s. When I was out dating, if I went out with a woman and she couldn't name all four Beatles, I didn't go out with her on a second date. Well, there was Peter Tork. There was Mickey Dolenz. <laughs> there was British, the British guy. Was that Mickey Dolenz? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, <laughs> Mike Love. That was Mike Love. Mike Love. Yeah. <laughs> The cousin, the cousin beetle. No, but, you know, I just, I always felt that, that uh, if they couldn't name all four Beatles, then I didn't care, you know. Hmm. All right. You know, and, and I, I think that it's, it's good to look back at the past because you're missing a lot of good stuff. You know, people don't, don't watch silent right. films today, and if they did, they would find some movies that were extraordinary. Yes. Just extraordinary. A handful. Not a, not a lot of them. But a handful. Yeah, but I mean, some of them are absolutely extraordinary. One of the best yeah. war movies is The Great Parade. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, and I'm trying to remember the movie that's my favorite. One of my favorites of all time. I can't remember the name of it right now because I'm an old man and I forget stuff. Napoleon. Know? Well, Napoleon, that, we went and saw that, you know? Well, uh, you turned me on to it, and I watched it uh, uh, last summer, I think. Is that not one of the greatest films ever made? It is It is way up there, yeah. It's yeah. way up there. Yeah. And, and, and the, with the recreated soundtrack, it's it's a tremendous The film movie. I'm thinking... In fact, about, that it's eight, eight hours long. Yeah. Uh, 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 Sunrise. I don't know Sunrise. A Sunrise was a film by the guy who did Nosferatu. What was his name now? I see my mind. Anyway, it's, it's just a great film. It, it was done in 1927. If you ever get to watch another silent film, look up Sunrise and watch Sunrise. It's, it's an amazing movie. What's the premise? The premise is a guy who thinks he killed his wife. He leaves with another woman to go to the big city. And then he goes back, finds out his wife's okay. And he... Uh, takes her to the big city to see all that he has found with this other woman. Mm. And it's it's just the way he portrays the city. I mean, it's all, it's weird, you know. It's it's all stylized. It's like Fritz Lang. The guy, no, not Fritz Lang. It wasn't Fritz Lang. Dang. Who was it? It was, uh, um, 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 I'm, I'll remember his name in a minute. But he, he did... Uh, he did a lot of German films like Nosferatu and, uh, and uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember. He did uh, the Ring Trilogy. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, the point is, it, Sunrise, look it up. It's a great film. Just a great film. And will, the first film, out, first, first of two films to win the first Academy Award. That year they gave an award for Best Picture and Best Artistic Achievement. Mm -hmm. picture so the, it won for best artistic achievement and and uh, uh what do you call it? wings won as the uh, best picture uh what is wings huh what is wings i don't wings know starred means. clara bow oh, and uh, richard arlen i think and uh it's about world war about world war one and aviators in world war one yeah. The, the war to end all wars. The war to end all wars. And mm -hmm. I told you the big parade, which is about World War I, is one of the best war movies ever made. 
There's a couple of scenes there that are just chilling. Uh, I will look them both up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, but if you don't see those films and you don't pay attention to silent films, you, you, if you're going to see them, you've got to see them with a good music track. Uh, the stuff, the guy that did the one I saw of Napoleon is, uh, is, is a great, uh, and I'm trying to remember his name now. Jesus, what is with me today? Don't, when I Abel get, Gans? Well, Abel Gans, uh, directed it. Yeah. The music was done to, the modern music was done by, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't remember, but he's good. He's really good. That's the music you heard. Right. Um, Great! It's a great soundtrack. Yes, it's an amazing music track. Um, and this was a day when you know, in in uh, silent films, when they played music like that with a symphony orchestra, it was usually only in the cities, the big markets, the big cities, and the small places. It was like a piano. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh, as they had symphonies playing the music, so it was it was. Pictures and music. That was what you were going to a theater uh, to watch. But all that kind of changed. And what happened, you know why they invented sound? Was so they could have the same symphony orchestra in every theater across America. They didn't invent it so people could talk. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, Al Josen goes, hey, ain't heard nothing yet. And they went, yeah, we could use it for talking. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's possible. Because the first uh, 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 non-silent picture was uh, uh, Barrymore in uh, in uh, Don Juan, and that Drew was Drew Barrymore was in movies that long ago. Huh? Drew Barrymore was in not movies Drew Barrymore. Long ago? <laughs> one of the other Barrymore, John Barrymore. Talking about kids who don't know anything. That's one of them. John Barrymore. Not Barrymore. Yeah. Well, I remember somebody doing an interview with Drew Barrymore, and, and she said she was talking about her period of being an alcoholic and being a drug mm-hmm. user and so on. And she was six years and old, And she right? said, I wouldn't think that, you know, you would be a, a drug user. I mean, it wasn't anywhere in your family, was it? And I thought, that's the stupidest interviewer of all time. I mean, that family had more drunks and drug users uh. Even up to her father, which was John Drew Barrymore, uh, uh, just absolutely, John Barrymore, major alcoholic. I don't Hmm. think he was ever sober, Uh, considered the greatest Shakespearean actor of his time. Uh, And you had Ethel Barrymore, and you had, uh, what do you call it, the other Barrymore? Uh, uh, I can't remember his name. What is with me today? You know. Yeah, the whole Barrymore family. Yeah. She's simply the la- the latest in a line of, of Barrymores. You know, she looks a lot like Ethel. I'll take your word for that. Yeah, you know I mean, the older she's getting, the more she's getting to look like Ethel. Uh, and uh, then you have the guy who was in the Doctor Kildare movies, the other Barrymore. Who wanted to talk like this all the time? Come on oh, over here, and I'll roll over there. Simon Bar Sinister? No, no. There was Lionel. There was. Uh, oh, there was Lionel, Lionel, Lionel Barrymore. Barrymore. That's the one Lionel I'm thinking Bar- of. Yes, yeah, that's right. Lionel See, Barrymore. If you just don't push me, I'm okay. If you push me, I won't. I can't come up with a name. Oh, uh, you got it now. So anyway, th- those were the Barrymores, and and they were. I saw a movie the other day on on TCM. Where all three of them were in the same movie together. It was like I think it was uh, uh, something about the uh, fall of Russia, hmm. and they were all playing parts in this movie. And I went, "How good is this?" Every Barrymore that ever lived. I mean, except Drew Barrymore, who right. hadn't been born yet. But, but anyway, so that's you know, it's just important to go back and listen to stuff before you were born because you're going to find some really great stuff. Oh, no, no question about it. No question about it. And I, 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 I kind of miss the forties, thirties, twenties, but classical music, great stuff. Yeah. Just. Great. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you say you enjoy music, music, then listen to all of it and go back and listen to some of that that went on before you were born. 
Definitely. which could listen just be jazz, the Beatles. Listen to some, some swing music yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Hey, listen, you know, we've run out of time again. Okay. This was a nice time. We didn't talk about health. No. no I didn't, I didn't, rem- I didn't want to lose you. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a five-minute moratorium on that. Yeah. They, we can talk five minutes, and then that's it. Right. Anyway. I will, I will leave. Thank you so much to our wonderful friend, Albert Radioso, for once again joining us for a little repartee. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is Gavin. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Albert Reynoso, and uh, that's about it for us tonight uh, because we have nobody waiting to come on the program, and quite frankly, uh, that gives me a chance to go rest somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it quits right now. There's no reason to keep going here. Uh, because there's nobody waiting to come on. You know, two, I'm thinking of killing Thursday nights. I really am. Because Thursday nights, we come up with uh, no people at all calling the program. And, uh, 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 you know, if uh, nobody cares, why should I do it, right? Right. So, uh, I guess. Oh, well, wait a minute. Now here comes two people have entered the waiting room. Let me see who they are. Here. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh well. Uh, here comes. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah. These are two people I wouldn't mind. One person at least. My, two people I wouldn't mind talking to. Okay. So admit all. And here they come. And uh, uh, of course, one of them is the lovely and attractive Don Giller, and the other one is Jeff Stein. Uh, hello, Don. Hello, Don. How are you? I, I have food in my mouth. I apologize. Mm. I just wanted to point out that uh, Sunrise was directed by F.W. Murnau. F.W. Murnau, correct. You were absolutely oh God, right. he's early. And the and the updated soundtrack to Napoleon, um, Carmine yeah. Coppola. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It, one was done by Carmine Coppola, and it was terrible. I just wanted to point out that uh, Sunrise was directed by F. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. that's not your fault. That's not your fault. That's uh, that's Jeff. I'm fine. Are you fine now? Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. He does uh, does all the music for the uh, for a lot of the silent films. And I'm trying to remember it offhand because we saw him live. Um, Wait a minute. Music for a silent film. What? If it's silent, where would, why would they have music? Because they did, always did. They had symphony orchestras playing music in the big theaters in New York. Okay. okay. Or, or just I, a piano. Or, I haven't seen, well, they got, I haven't it got to a, a piano of... by the time it got out to the hinterlands. But here yeah. in the big cities, they were symphony orchestras. Yeah. And it was considered, the movies were considered pantomime to music. Okay. okay. I'm trying to remember the guy's name right now. And I, uh, Carl Davis is the oh, guy's okay. name. Car, guy? Carl Davis, uh, Carmine Coppola did the soundtrack, the music track to uh, Napoleon because Coppola bought the rights to Napoleon and then brought his father in to do the music. And it was a terrible music score. Just a horrible music score. Didn't so, his, didn't can I finish with the, can, I, can I finish with what I'm saying first? Then you can put in your two cents worth. In okay. Uh, then um, in Europe, uh, they wanted to do a new release that was a completely restored Napoleon, and they wanted to use Carl Davis. So they had to actually get the rights from uh, Coppola by saying they would never, ever release the Carl Davis score in America. However, they did bring Carl Davis over here, and Shecky and I went to the uh, uh, theater over in Oakland, the Paramount Theater, where they had the full film, which is five and a half hours long, and Carl Davis conducting the symphony orchestra to his score. 
Wow. And it was an abs it's the greatest night I ever spent in a movie theater. So, yeah, I IMDB says the Carl Davis's score was in 1980 and Carmine's was a year later, 1981. That I don't know for sure. Yeah. He may have. It could, it could he, be wrong. Well, no, he may have wrong. written it a year earlier. Yeah. Uh, there were people who, there was a guy who, I'm trying to remember another name now, who uh, restored these films. And uh, uh, Brownlow, Kevin Brownlow. Okay. And he brought Carl Davis in to do the score for the restored Napoleon. The version that uh, um, uh, Coppola released in this country uh, wasn't the full version. So, so really, the Carl Davis and the Carl Davis score is magnificent, and you can go online and buy a copy mm -hmm. of Napoleon with the Carl Davis score. And if you get a chance, do it because number one, it's it's one of the all-time great motion pictures. And secondly, that is one of the great motion picture scores. Mm -hmm. And Carl Davis did, did scores for a lot of silent films, old silent films, because that's the way they were intended to be, was with mm -hmm. the symphony orchestra. Uh, and he did a lot of them, and it was great. Now, what were you going to say, uh, Alan? Armine Coppola did the, did the scores for the Godfather series. No, he didn't. <laughs> I just watched it the other night. I know I you listening. watched you watched Godfather Two, which he oh, did do the score yeah. for. The first <laughs> score was done by Nina Rota. Oh, okay. And the se second score was done by Carmine Coppola, but also Nina Rota as well. So I was two thirds right. Well, yeah, <laughs> kinda, kinda. I saw Napoleon uh, uh, at the uh, uh, Radio City Music Hall in, in the fall of '82, and that was the Carmine Coppola. Version. Yeah, I guess so. I, I I wasn't paying attention to the score. Yeah, I was paying attention at the end where 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 the film splits into three. You know. Yeah, three. of course. That, yeah, oh, the, yeah, three. that 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, they. You know, it's interesting. Is that Carl Davis conducted the score at the Paramount Theater in the, in San Francisco, <clears throat> in well in Oakland actually, okay. uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was a a really great evening. Of, of music and movies all melded into one. And I took Marjorie to it because at the last minute I got her a ticket. She didn't, wasn't planning on going. And finally she said, I, I wouldn't mind going. So I got her a ticket. She was a couple of rows in back of me. Mm -hmm. And after it was all over, she said to me, I thought I would be bored to tears. She said, I've never been so excited in a movie theater in my life. Because, because she sat away from you? No, 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 because <laughs> because at the end, when those three panels open up mm -hmm. and they start playing the full final score in that film, it is just, it's, it's breathtaking. Plus, there was a dinner break during this film, because who can sit for five and a half hours watching the same movie? So uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful experience. And plus, I, I, I say I see here that uh, Carl Davis also did uh, the score, uh, the revised score to uh, Lester Keaton's the the, uh, the General. Oh yeah, yeah. And he did yeah. a lot more than that. If you go online, yeah, no, yeah, that's one that uh, City Lights. A lot yeah. of the, a lot of the Brownlow films that Brownlow restored, he used Carl mm -hmm. Davis to do the music for. I've got I have a bunch of Buster Keaton DVDs and 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 many versions of the general so I'll, I'll check and see which one uh, if if mm. there's one that has Carl Davis uh, doing the score. Yeah. Yeah, the one that was released by what movie company was it? I'm trying to remember uh, the movie company. Uh, uh, but they 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 used the general with the David with the Davis mm -hmm. score. And it was Kino, a, not Kino. Oh no, it was not Kino. They released it on Laserdisc originally, mm -hmm. and then uh, they also released it on uh, you know, VHS and so on. But right. I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you all the information I can find on that. Yeah, no, I've, I haven't talked about this stuff in decades. It's nice. Well, you know something? It's people do not have any appreciation for silent films because basically people don't have any appreciation for anything that went on before they were born. I'm sorry, what? They don't have any appreciation for th <laughs> things before they were born. And in the case of these silent films, if you say you love movies and you are not familiar with these silent films and you have not made yourself aware of them or watched them, 
you're missing out some, on some great films. I mean, Sunrise was a good example. I, we mentioned with F, F.W. Murnau. One of the greatest films ever made. One of the greatest war movies ever made was The Big Parade. And that was, I think, 1925, if I'm not mistaken. What are you doing here? Yeah. So my, my area of the country, uh, I've been to the Paramount. It's a neat theater. It's got a, a, a floor that raises and lowers for the orchestra and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But in, in Fremont, where I live, it's, it's, it's comprised of five communities, and one of them was Niles. And they actually did silent movies in Niles before Hollywood. Which silent films? Um, some of the, uh, what was his name, uh, Buster Keaton? No. Nope. Something like that? No. no. Char um, Charlie, Chaplin Charlie Chaplin started doing his films in Niles. Charlie Chaplin, right? I, yeah. I don't follow it he that much. He did about, I think, six films in Niles before he went down to work for Max Sennett. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you know a lot more about this than I do, but it's, it's, it, it, Fremont, the city of Fremont is comprised of five areas, and one area is Niles, and that's where do you, they, do you know it was supposed to be the original Hollywood, the original motion picture capital? No. Out behind Marin, out behind uh, San Rafael in Marin County. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but they, they, they switched their, their place to uh, L.A., or where it is now known as Hollywood, because the weather was better. The weather was pretty much, it didn't rain a lot. It didn't, uh, yeah, it was, it, it, the Bay Area was a little damp, okay? So uh, yeah. Yeah. they didn't do it there, but that's where they were supposed to do it originally. So what was Shecky doing in Oakland? Well, he wasn't doing anything in Oakland. He and I both agreed we were going to go out to California to watch Napoleon with the Carl <laughs> Davis. Okay? Uh, and so you hitchhiked? He, huh? <laughs> you hitchhiked? No. So he and I, so, uh, he and I made a, a date to, be, to meet out there. But then Marjorie said, I don't, I don't want you going to California without me. So I went, okay, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go out there together. Uh, well, do you remember what year? Yes, it had to be uh, about uh, uh, 2010, I think, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember what year we were married, because here's the story. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie and I go out there, and we decide um, uh, she's not going to go to the, the show, but then she decides she wanted to go to the movie with us. So I looked up the theater, and I found one seat for her, okay? Uh, and uh, so now we're out in California, and I said, "Let's go up to uh, let's go up to Reno because I like to get in the car and drive to Reno. It's just like my big time." Or Lake Tahoe, go. Let's go to Lake Tahoe. So she says, "Sure." She says, "Well, while we're up there, why don't we get married?" <laughs> so I said, "Okay, you do the arrangements, and you know." So we. We went out, we bought rings, we got a woman to marry us up there by the lake, by the shores of Lake Tahoe, and we drove up, we got ourselves a nice, really nice hotel room in a big, beautiful uh, 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 hotel, and uh, the Hyatt up there, and um, we uh, then went to the shores of Lake Tahoe, met this woman, got married by the shores, she did the service, she took some pictures of us. It was a full, you know, costed like two, three, four, I don't know how much, $400 for the full package, okay? And then we signed our, uh, our um, uh, what do you call it, our, the, the wedding decree or whatever you sign. License. The wedding license. And you know where we signed it? In a McDonald's. Where, where Kamala Harris worked. Yes, where Kamala yeah, Harris yeah. worked, mm -hmm. bending over the French fries. Anyway, uh, uh, so then uh, we go back down to the Bay Area, and we're supposed to meet Shecky, who's now flying in, and we agree. Uh, we talk to him. We say, we'll meet you at the Disney Museum in the Presidio. Still there. Uh, yeah. It's, of course it's still there. They bit it, built it to stay. Oh. <laughs> I mean, come on. It wasn't a temporary structure. Uh, but they, um, uh, so we met him there. And we, the first thing I, we said to him, we said, guess what we did? Well, mm -hmm. we're, we got to California before him. Guess what we did? 
And he said, you got married. <laughs> Didn't even think twice. He just said, you got married. You didn't look at the ring? I, I don't know. I, I, I think I told Marjorie, take off our ring so we can surprise <laughs> him or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he said, you got married. And I said, yep. You know, another one of those moments I remember from my times with Shecky, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway. So I had a friend of mine get married in Lake Tahoe, similar to this. It was about 1985 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was somebody I worked with in, in police department and he went up there and they were going to spend a week on this cabin right on the water right on the lake and so they got married they checked into the cabin and everything was good until the next day when they went out they had a little boat that they could you know that had a 10 horsepower motor and they go out on the lake on yeah but in the in the boat was some dead woman <laughs> oh really she wasn't there the day before somebody <laughs> and so you know police are there and all this kind of stuff was she these, killed or what did she just die she, she was murdered hmm. and her body was dumped in a boat it did the guy i'm sure the guy had no clue that you know my friend was a cop and you know he was trying to get away from police work and now the damn boat at the at the ramp at the behind their cabin at the lake has got a dead body in it so needless to say they didn't take the boat out that day <laughs> that's quite a story yeah, 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 that's quite a story. Just, he's still married, which is also quite a story in itself because, you know, cops have a pretty high <laughs> marriage turnover, but uh, yeah. he's still married. He's retired and he's still married. Yeah, well, and, he, uh, a lot of people have funny stories about their wedding, and that's it's not funny, but it is a it is a strange story. Well, you know, you know we, well, we, we, uh, we, we we woke up the next morning. It was a giant snowstorm had happened. And we we're up to our neck, and so I had to get chains for the rental car, which they didn't charge me to put on. And then I only drove it about 20 miles before we could take them off. So you know. So, so why why is there a high marriage turnover among cop, uh, cops? Just this the just the stress. Yeah, I think so. Home? I think it's the I think it's the stress, the long hours. Uh, I, I don't know. There, there's a high suicide rate among cops too. Hmm. You know. Um, regrets uh so, you know you get to see you know uh, you know if you're if you're in a quiet city you don't see much but if you're in a city that's full of action you get to see a lot of people that are at the worst of their life right i mean if you're working homicide you're working around dead people all the time but you get to go yeah. out and arrest but you know you you see people in fights you see husband and wives beating each other with fry pans you know you just it well, isn't this peachy job that it looks like on Adam 12 or anything. Well, we so. never thought it was a peachy job. You know, I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to. And, and it gets to you. You get PTSD, kind of like the military. And, you know, some guys just can't handle well, they, the PTSD they, and they eat their they, gun. There is a problem that police have. A couple of problems that occur. One is called the Wyatt Earp syndrome. I think you know about that, don't you? Yeah, sure. You know where they carry a gun and they suddenly feel it makes them all powerful. Invincible. Invincible, yeah. 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 That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is is that uh, they... Um, um, the trouble with police was, in the old days when I was a kid, you had a cop and he had a beat and he walked the beat. You know, like mm -hmm. when I lived in North Beach, there was a cop and he walked the beat in our neighborhood. Right. Same cop every day, walk the beat. We all knew him. We stopped mm -hmm. and talked to him. We, he got to know us, you know. He knew all the people in the neighborhood and so on. Uh, and the, the same was true when I, uh, when I came to, when I went to Marin County. I knew a lot of the police there, although there they, they did go around in police cars because there was a lot of rural area they had to cover. Sure. Um, but the problem that happened was when they started putting police in police cars. And the mm -hmm. only time they ever got out of that car is when there was something horrible happening. And so they get the idea, that's what the whole world is like. You yep. know, everybody mm -hmm. is suspect. Everybody's a low yep. life. Everybody's got, yep. there's nothing but trouble. Never so, trust anybody but your own. So my yep. my big argument for years has been we should put the cops back on the beat. They do in some cities. I'll bet they do in New York. I'll bet there's 
foot cops. Anymore. I haven't seen one since I, I in Harlem. I haven't seen a single a single cop. Really? I've wow. only seen them in police cars. Yeah, I don't know. Last really? time I was in New York was in 1999. So. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh. Well, I mean, up in your area, that's a rural area, Jeff. So I'm sure they're all, you know. Uh, but when I go to Bronx, I see them. Two police together on the street. Now, where yeah. you do see police now is in subways. Oh. Well, I, I, I saw, I saw police in subways when I was there in 1999. Yeah, mm. yeah. <clears throat> they but, have them here, too. They have BART police here, you know, so. But police did, I think, think it a lousy attitude once they to stop being able to actually interact with the public. Yep. Okay. I think so. Also, they interact with each other, and that gets to be kind of a bad situation. So your too. Wyatt Earp syndrome is actually in law enforcement called the John Wayne syndrome. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, yeah, I've well. heard it called Wyatt Earp, so I knew what you were talking about. But you know, the cop feels invincible. He pulls down the shades when he's talking to me. Puts his hand on his gun that's hanging on his leg. Kind of like an old Western movie and stuff. The cops but, used to come over to me and stop my car and look in the car and with the glasses on it. I felt like I was looking into a toaster. Absolutely. You know? um, the mirrored shades and everything. Yeah. We're trying to get away from some of that and make the cops look more human. They're allowing it. When I, when I was doing it, no tattoos, no visible tattoos. Nowadays, you see guys with tattoos, sleeves of tattoos with, you know, short sleeve shirts on. They don't, you know mustaches beards all the things that you know we couldn't do yeah yeah well oh you know it they're, they're trying to make it so people feel more comfortable with them around i guess uh, i never felt comfortable with cops i always had a, a cop i don't thing. blame you i had I a cop thing you. You know. they're not you know they, they tell you as a kid you know cops are your friend you know if you have a problem go to the police the trouble is as an adult cops are not your friend not unless they're i mean they're friends with you but but, you know, if a cop stops you, your best thing to say is nothing. Invoke yeah. your invoke your right to remain silent. Yeah. You know, if they, if they ask, they want to search your car or search your house, refuse it. They, they may be able to do it anyhow if they have a warrant or something like that. But, you know, there are so many people, you, you go to the front door and you knock on the door. And, well, by and law, they, are, they, are, they allowed, are they allowed to, you know, to inspect cars? I guess they are, aren't they? It depends. If they have probable cause, sure. Yeah. But they have to yeah. later on prove that probable cause if somebody decides to sue them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it does is it a is it a low bar of probable cause or is it a high bar of probable well, cause? Well, probable cause is kind of a medium bar. A low bar would be, you know, uh suspicious, you know, it looks suspicious to <laughs> to the common person, to you or me. Well, not me maybe, but you or you or you or Jeff. It looks suspicious to you, and that would that would give you reasonable suspicion, mm -hmm. and you would be able to go talk to the person, and then based on what they say, or if you smell marijuana or liquor or whatever you smell mm -hmm. in the car, you can go farther with it. But mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I, I I've been stopped by the police, and they say we like I, I drive a, a full size van, and they say we'd like to search your van, and I ask them for what, and they say well we just want to make sure that you're not bringing any drugs or kidnapping anybody I said well I'll tell you what I will open the drape behind me and let you look in the back but I won't I won't yeah, but that's interesting to me dirt. that you being a cop yeah see I don't play that I don't play that game I don't I don't No, but that I'm, you would you I'm, would do you would do that yeah I don't I don't like you know I don't like saying hey I used to be a cop you know in San Francisco they don't care they arrest their mm -hmm. own but you know um I, I just don't do that. I mean, there's just no real reason to. I mean, you know, I carry a concealed weapon on me at any point, but I rarely, rarely do that. It's just, it's not worth the liability. And yeah. uh, I would, I would, I would never want to kill somebody. Now, if, if they were threatening my life, I could do it. But you know, or well, if, you never know if you can do it till you, till you have to do it. Well, you, you know. I'm pretty sure I can do it. We we've, we've done some. I don't you know, think I pretty, could. That's why I never owned a gun. Why I never had that's one. That's probably in my house. that's probably good because the gun then becomes a, you know, if somebody breaks into your house, becomes stolen, and you know. Well, they, you, they, they, tell me if I'm wrong on this, but the most common thing that kills people are their own weapons. 
Um, whether it's whether it's that they accidentally go off or that somebody comes in is not armed, they pull out a gun, point it at them, don't have the ability mm -hmm. to shoot the person. It's wrested from them, and they turn around and get shot with it. It it happens. Um, in other words, it's better not to have a gun and bring that into the equation. Yeah, if you have a gun, keep it locked in a in a safe where your kids and their friends and nobody that you want not touching it is at. And, and in California, they require it. In some other states, they do too. Yeah, probably New York City, Chicago. I would imagine and we're real strict gun yeah. laws. I, I don't. Know. Hmm? Uh, guns don't accidentally go off. Giller has a question here. What? Right. Yeah, and I, and I, a couple of years ago, I, I was walking down Broadway, just south of one. 110th Street, and there's this big guy uh, sitting by a, a bus stop naked. And there are three or four cops surrounding him just to, to put, put a towel or a blanket, you know, to cover him. So I went up to one of the cops and I said, you signed up for this? <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he, that's the reaction he got. So it was, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, oh, gee. I, 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 this one, uh, uh, time to go. No, no. One <laughs> of my, there we go. Um, I, both my lights on. weren't on. Yeah. Now it's yeah. on. I was anyway. going to ask, um, is there any police training that warns cops of the stress? And, yeah. Um, you know, when I went to the Academy in 1980, back in the dark ages, there wasn't much on that, but Nowadays, they're realizing, just like they are in the military, that um, cops end up with PTSD like the military does. In 1980, you know, if you came home injured from the from a war or something like that, they they just pushed you aside. Now they now they have psychiatric help and stuff like that. So if a cop shoots somebody in the line of duty on on the job, they usually take him off and send him to a psychiatrist and evaluate him and make sure that he's okay to go back to work. And some cops aren't. Some cops quit. I mean, they can't. They can't handle. It. They had to take a life, even though it was justified, and you know, and they, they're, they're, nobody sues them in court or anything like that. It's just, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the guys I, I I hang out with work in other cities, and have had to kill people in the line of duty, and they they're they're pretty much okay with it. Um, I don't I don't think most cops go out to kill people. No. Um, but, you... but but also the police departments have to be careful to who they who they allow into the police department. Oh yeah, Definitely. because it does attract a certain bad group of people, you it know, can. who who would find that, it, you know, they do a... background investigations and psychiatric evaluations and all kinds of stuff, you know, yeah. before they send and they you let them. you in. Yeah. yeah, it was hard to believe, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I well, told them I knew Alex Bennett. They said, oh, We on, have yeah. minted a brand new criminal here in New York City today. A uh, mayor? The mayor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Our mayor finally got busted. <clears throat> Were you surprised with that, Don? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I was neither surprised or, nor not surprised because I, I just didn't care. He didn't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. If he's guilty, you know, he'll he'll pay he'll pay the price, and I have no issue with that. Um, my my only fear is that Andrew Cuomo thinks that he's got a shot. Well, <laughs> well I think he does. You yeah. don't you don't like Cuomo? Uh, I think. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what I think. No, 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 it does matter. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. To me, it does. Well, remember what we talked about on Monday. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> I insulted you. <laughs> oh, did you insult me? Yeah. How'd you? No, I, I think with his, with, with, with his, with the, with the scandals that he caused himself as governor, I just don't think he's in the position to succeed. But all those at, things were disproved. The sexual, the sexual yeah, harassment. Yeah. I don't think. Yep. Yeah. They were all I'm dropped. Sure they were that. all dropped. Yeah. They're all dropped, but it doesn't mean that they were just... Well, they, you know, in Washington, they took Marion Barry back after his prison term. Yeah. Why not Cuomo? You know, he didn't go to prison. Well, did he? Okay, let's go. Let, let's talk about Cuomo for a second. And I don't want to berate uh, Don, 
Um, mainly Andy, because you, I don't you, know you, him well enough, and he might come you over. Owe and, it. You huh? owe it to me to berate me. Oh, I owe it to you to berate <laughs> you? Okay, I'll berate you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no, the, the point is that uh, I, I think that during COVID, he was pretty damn good. You know, he really got us through it. Uh, I feel my life is kind of was saved by him in a way, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Strange, but yes, mm -hmm. it worked. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, the, the nursing home thing, which is it's tough to it's tough to blame him because we just didn't know. Exactly. Um, well, actually, I mean, we were working. he didn't know either. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, even Fauci didn't. Well, know. Let, let let Jeff talk here. He gets to, he talks so seldom. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying that uh, the, the at that point when he was in charge, uh, it worked. I don't know why, but it worked. It worked. Yeah. Well, you know what it was. He got on the air every night. Yes. And and you tuned right. him in. And he gave you a, he gave you a pep talk, but he told you what was going on, so you weren't in the dark about it, and so on and so forth. And I think he got us through it. We looked forward to that every night. And um, um, let's face it, uh, I said to Marjorie, I said, if Mario Cuomo came up and patted you on the ass, what would your reaction be? And she said, I'd tell all my friends Mario Cuomo just <laughs> patted me on the ass. So do you have that same feeling about Giuliani and when 9-11 happened here or there? No, I don't think I don't think he was anything special. Uh, I, no. I, I, I part of nine of the problem with 9-11 was the fact that he was the idiot who said, oh, no, let's store all the gasoline for the city in World Trade Center 3, and that's why it blew up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, uh, uh, he just happened to be there, and I, I have to give him credit. He did get on the air and did talk to the people every night, right. And, right. and that's part of what a, what a mayor should do, and I, I have to give him credit for that. Other than that, the guy's the biggest slime bag that ever lived. <laughs> We sure found that out. And all of the other five, by the way. Hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I uh, uh, it, it, Giuliani was. By the way, do you know my my uh, in my uh, prostate seeds were done by the same guy who did Giuliani's? Hmm. That's, is that kind of like going to the same barber? <laughs> you know? I I remember seeing uh, Cuomo. Uh, when he was campaigning for, I think, lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, I think it was on 96 and, and Broadway. And I, I came up to him. I said, you look a lot different without the makeup. Wait, well, you know how to charm people, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's really good he's at a it. Typical New Yorker. So, so he said, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, when I went to what did York, you th What did you think of his father? Uh, I wish he had made a decision to run or not a lot earlier. Who, uh, his father? Yeah. I mean, for because he was procrastinating. It was when, when Clinton was. It was ninety two, I think. Yeah. He was just putting it off and putting it off, and everyone was waiting for Cuomo, and then finally he said, "I'm not going to do it." But he could have said that months earlier. Am I right or am I wrong? But wasn't he one of the greatest speech givers of anybody? One of the great orators in American politics. Not as good as uh, Calvert DeForest, but sure. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. Oh, Do you know who Calvert DeForest was? Either of you? See, no. they don't know. Did you ever watch Letterman? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever see um, um, what was the character's name? Larry Bud. Larry Melman. Bud Melman. Doesn't ring a bell. Then you never watch that show. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I want to find you. Uh, here it is. Uh, this is this is Jerome Powell, head of the uh, Federal Reserve. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It even looks like him. Yeah. <laughs> and here's Calvert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Now here's a little piece of trivia. Tell him who. Uh, tell him who Calvert DeForest. What was it? His uncle or his? Um. Actually, I, I I did figure out the relationship, which of course I now forgot. It was an uncle. I think he was a a nephew. I a, think a nephew. A nephew of Lee DeForest. All right. Who invented the vacuum tube? Um. Ostensibly. Yeah. I, in fact, I, I wrote a post, uh, a Facebook post, maybe a year, maybe a year ago, that I was I was this composer that I'm researching. Mm -hmm. His parents. They all grew up in a small town in Ohio called Caddis, and on Saturdays they would listen to the Metropolitan Opera on uh, on radio. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking up the history of the Metropolitan Opera, and and the idea of transmitting radio signals beyond the city mm -hmm. uh, was developed by DeForest. Right, right. Well, he invented the vacuum tube, basically, yeah. which was an amplification tube that allowed you, allowed you to amplify sound so that you could, it was, you know, it allowed motion pictures to have sound behind the screens and everything with big speakers and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And, of course, the very tubes you had in those early radios that you, you used uh, were all, uh, I think, uh, sold to you by Calvert DeForest. Uh, not Calvert DeForest, <laughs> Lee DeForest. <laughs> Wrong guy. Hello to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. Hi, everybody. How you doing? How you doing yourself? Uh, okay. I was busy <laughs> today. I was really? Working. <clears throat> yeah. What were you I busy doing? about the A's leaving town and that sort of thing. What? The A's are leaving sport. town? Yeah, their last game was today. Last game. Where are they? Are they going to Vegas today here? Well, they're going to Vegas, but they're stopping in Sacramento for two or three years. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you drive up there. It's a couple-hour drive. Why couldn't they just stay in Oakland for two or three years? Why do they have to go to Sacramento? Because their owner's a piece of shit, and they don't want to negotiate. And Oakland says, screw you then. Go find a place to play. And they're still not sure whether it's going to happen there. Because the now the Players Association is going back and saying, eh, we're not so sure we want you to play there. It's not a real field. It's da 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 da. You'll have an advantage, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. What's not a real field? Up in Sacramento? Yeah, the River Cats field. It's a minor league field. Oh, boy. And they're going to play well, there for well, a couple Why, years why are they, they doing this. that? They could they're have building. stayed in Oakland, couldn't they? They could have, but Oakland wanted to pay them, you know, wanted them to pay full, uh, full rent. And they didn't want to pay full rent. And oh, so let's whole, go to Sacramento. It was a pissing match between Oakland and and the A's and and uh, John Fisher, the owner of the Gap. Never buying, don't ever buy the Gap again. Yeah, well, uh, when I knew when I hung out with the A's, okay, it was owned it was back by in the Haas days. Yeah, yeah, it was owned by the Haas. Yeah, and I knew Haas, and in fact, was good friends with him. And uh, he he loved having that team, and he loved owning the team, yep. and he was very proud of the team, you know? Let me inter interrupt for just a second. Uh, Mike Chisholm is probably going to join here. Just ignore him. Just just pretend he's not there. Oh, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll pretend he's not okay. here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like this? Huh? It was just go. Like this? Like that? <laughs> Everybody freeze when I put him on, Okay. Then he went, he'll think he's frozen. Anyway, um, but, but yeah, what was I was saying? Where were hit. we? Oh yeah, Haas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I can do that too, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, I forget. Talking about the A's. Oh, talking about the A's. Oh, wait a minute, Gluckman. It says. Is just entered the waiting room. Let me put my picture on here, just in case Gluckman isn't who we are expecting. Okay, mm. uh, so the, uh, you have me, folks, to look at. Um, hmm. Well, Gluckman isn't joining. Isn't joining. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of him. Oh, wait a minute. There he is. Is this... Oh, um, no, that's that's not somebody. 
Okay, we're going to get rid of them. That's and Jason we're going to remove them. Okay, what? That's no, Jason Strahan. Uh, no, yeah, of course, it's not, uh, it's not him. Okay. No. Anyway, back to our group here. Uh, you look so cute as a dog. Gellin. I, I think Killer. it's a good look for you, Don. Much better than the real thing. <laughs> of course, if, if I talk, he, it, oh, his mouth moves only when he talks. Okay. Anyway, yeah. come on back. Show us your picture again, Killer. Killer? I mean, hang on. <laughs> no, no. You see, your mother told you if you did that face, it'd stay that yeah. way. Yeah. Tony will come on and take you for a walk. Watch it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I just, you know, I mean, I, uh, that seems rather stupid for the A's to do that, you know. Yeah, well, there's and, a lot of people who think that. And, and are the, uh, as you say, oh, here, here comes Mike Chisholm. Okay, let me see We're if this freeze. really is. Okay. Okay, let's. Okay, we can start. We, we oh, he th gonna, really gonna, thinks it is frozen. Now. The, no, don't What's reboot. Hey, listen, Chisholm, do not reboot. We were faking right, you. We decided we would pu uh, pull that joke on you. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Okay, okay. We just got the gang here. All you right, know. can you hear me all right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nope, can I hear can't you. hear you. Huh? I was texting Don. I was texting Don about business stuff, and uh, he told me that you guys were all on here. This is a delight. Well, no, it's not. Yeah, it isn't. <laughs> the show is the, the albatross around my neck. You know. It's also rebroadcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's live to tape. How, how are you doing there, uh, Mike? Uh, I'm doing really good. Um, I'm going to say something here because uh, I believe that the universe gives opportunities and stuff. And I'm just here. I've got a meeting with Worldwide Pants on Monday. Mm-hmm. Nice. With Walter. No, not with Walter. With the other one. Tom. And, yeah. And uh, I'm pretty darn excited about it. Nope. We're pitching him. Uh, we're pitching Worldwide Pants. The... Uh, uh, the Jack Rollins documentary that we're uh, wanting to produce. Is it a and phone call or so, a Zoom? Uh, it's a Zoom, yeah. And there's going to be multiple members of the production team that we've assembled here. Um, Make sure Alex is there. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. I wasn't going to say anything to anybody, but the opportunity came up here. So, yeah. So life is good, Alex. Very good. But I, uh, I'm i sorry you have not, and I haven't had a chance to record yet. I can't wait till we do. Yeah, good. Well, when you get a chance, we'll do it. You know. yeah. Alex, when you have him on again, make sure you spell his last name right. <laughs> Why? You didn't spell it right? No, you're missing an H. Hold on a second. Let me look <laughs> at the way I have that name spelled. Well, yeah. when you miss the H, they're usually from Canada, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think it's illegal in Canada. Let me see the Chisholm here. clan made its way across Canada over the last 150 years. And right, the Chisholm man. clan is very live and well in Scotland. Well, let's uh, see here. Uh, but, but, let's see here. First name. Oh, wait, maybe I don't have the name here. Oh, I thought I had the name here. Oh, well. While you're looking for the name, I'll show this. Anton Fig. Uh, it's a signed drumstick that he gave to us not too long ago after he came wow. on the show. So we've That's added that cool. to the right in front of Shecky here. We put that uh, yeah. on the set. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what happened to the uh, what happened to your name here, but I, I I thought I had spelled it correctly. You know. Ah. All yeah. good. No, but I have these. See, I have these names all here from the people that have done the show, and I can't believe that I d don't have uh, uh, your name here. Um, oh, well, anyway, forget well, it. Well, I feel like we righted a wrong in discovering that tonight. What I is feel it? like we've done some good. Well, wait a minute. I spelled a C-H. 
C H I S H O L M, the Chisholm oh, clan. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Mm. All right. All right. So I screwed up. <laughs> hey, I hear your <laughs> mayor's in trouble. There, <laughs> there it is. Oh, look at you, Don. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll get it right next time, okay? Hey, I'm cool either way. You call me whatever you like. I'm just no, glad I, that you call I, me. I like calling people by their proper names, you know. It's, it's... Hey, like, <laughs> Geller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, anyway, so uh, uh, let me see. What what what's that? Here. Oh, I For I see. Now. He's a chipmunk. Oh, here I yeah I got Mike Chisholm. There we go. See, there we go. I spelled it wrong. Okay, so how is it spelled? C H I S H O L M. C I S H O L M. H O L M. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. Okay. There we go. Is that right? That's right, right? Okay. So anyway. Did you change it real time? Yeah, I changed it real time. The damage is done. Yeah. Hey, we I need can do a new everything. Mayor, it, so listen, that's is there it. anybody who wants it? Huh? What? We need a new mayor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you, is there anybody you, here is available? Uh, well, you know, as we say Cuomo has said that he's thinking of running for mayor. Oh, God. What How do you mean? That would, be, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Isn't that guy, isn't he a good, you know, civic well, leader? Well, let's see. Geller doesn't agree. Giller doesn't agree. <laughs> Giller doesn't agree. Um, wouldn't you like to see him mayor of New York? I mean, come on. What are the other choices? You know. I mean, I think David Dinkins should come out of retirement. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. Dead. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Well, that'd be more impressive even. Oh, what's the guy I interviewed years ago as mayor of New York? Uh, the short guy. The real tiny guy. Bloomberg. Well, no, not Bloomberg. Uh, uh, well, huh? Huh? What'd you say? LaGuardia. No, not LaGuardia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's available. I only I know don't think Koch, so either. Koch <laughs> Dinkins. No, no. This Giuliani, Abe, Abe, Abe Beam. Abe Beam. All right. Abe Beam was so short that when I put him in a chair on my show for my show, his feet were dangling. <laughs> I swear to you, that's how short he was. He's a regular Mickey Rooney. Yeah, yeah, and completely out of it, completely out of it, because I'm sitting there, and he's got, he, he puts the earphones on, and I said, well, hey, Mayor, you don't, you don't need the earphones, because we're not taking any calls. And, and, goes, and you're asking him about the dead. He goes, okay, just let me know when I put the earphones on. I said, no, you're not going to need the earphones, because we're not taking any calls. Okay, I will put the earphones on when we take the calls. And this went on for five minutes, for crying out <laughs> loud. I couldn't tell him, do not put on the earphones. Do you think he was giving you a hard time and joking around? A beam joking around? Are you kidding me? I don't know me? who he is. Who's, who's, that? who's oh. that? Is that Beam? Yeah, it's Beam. That's a young wow. picture of Beam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's when he was still okay, you know. Wasn't <laughs> that far out? So anyway, so we got a mayor who uh, probably isn't going to be a mayor much longer. Uh, we um, uh, says he won't resign. They all say that. It, it may not be his decision. Right. Yeah. yeah. I got that. He just wants to collect his pension. The New York Times has already called for him to resign, and everybody around him is calling for him to resign. So I mean, they in the beginning they go, "No, I'm not going to resign," because they got to test that one out. And then eventually they do resign. I mean, look at look at Biden. Biden was refusing to step down, and guess who stepped down? Yeah. You know? So that's too bad it wasn't Trump that stepped down. Yeah. So how do you think the election's going, guys? Be a landslide. Back and neck. A, a, a landslide on what side? On the good side. On the good side. You think it's mm -hmm. going to be a landslide? You don't think so, though, right, uh, uh, 
Mr. Chisholm Mike, with an Mike. H. I'm, I'm, with, I, I'm with Kevin. I think it's neck and neck, man. He's Canadian. That's right. I'm an impartial. I don't think it's neck and neck. Madness. Here's what I think. Here's my take on it. Yes, in the polls, it's it's not neck and neck. She's actually ahead in the polls, but within the in the uh, what do they call it? the uh, margin, margin of, error. of error? Which didn't the margin of error used to be three percent? And now all of yeah, a sudden like three, it's three to four percent. I think now they're calling it four to five, aren't they? Yeah, now they're calling it four to five. They, depends, and that's only because the, the polls. It's only because the pollsters have been wrong so often lately, you know. But the thing is that okay, you go up to somebody and you're taking a poll. Hey, we're taking a poll. Who are you going to vote for for president? Uh, uh, Kamala Harris, or I'm going to vote for Donald Trump, or whatever. Well, that's really easy because somebody just walked up to you with a clipboard. Asked you a question, you gave them the answer, and now it's over with. Now it's election day. Do you go to the polls and make that a reality? Or do you maybe not, you're not inspired to go to the polls? But still, think, you were part of a poll. I think, I think they're not polling college students. I, every time you hear college students on, on, on in the news or something like that, NBC or CNN, they're talking to him and saying, now that Kamala is running, you decided to vote. Yep. I've never been able to vote. I wasn't old enough to vote four years ago. So I'm now voting and we're voting for Kamala. A lot of college students are going to vote for her. But I, I don't see them in the polls, their age group. That's where my daughter is. Well, I think I think they I, I think the polls are a little better now. In the old days, they if you didn't have a phone at home, you didn't make a poll. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, today, everybody has a phone. You know, even 13-year-olds have a phone. How did you know cell phones? Hmm? They have a cell phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A cell tower, not a, not a pole. Hey, can I, can I ask a question to the group? Yeah. And it's, a, it's uh, I got to give it back. It's a Joe Rogan premise. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, I'm but, trying to think if it was Rogan or whoever it was. Here, hold on. Matter. I'm going to gather my thoughts and come back and ask this question. Hold on a second. Let's hope it wasn't it was. Rogan. <laughs> Let's hope it wasn't <laughs> Rogan. Right. Exactly. You're not Rogan's fans? No. No. I like them on news radio. Yeah. Mm. Was he on news radio? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Very funny. Yeah, with, uh, with Phil Hartman. He was yeah. friends with Phil Hartman. Hmm. But now he's turned into a, a know-it-all, very successful podcaster, making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but he, but you know, he just pontificates and bullshitting. Yep. But well, yeah, he's and got people it. buy it. Pe people in Canada, especially, buy it. <laughs> but you know why they do? Because up in Canada, they don't know crap. Yeah. Right. Who care? They're just up there. Just sitting here going, oh, tisk tisk, those Americans. They mispronounce words. Hey. And, you know, you keep coming down to New York more often and visiting with Worldwide Pants, and eventually they're going to, ex you know, they're going to throw you out of Canada, Mike. Well, if I'm going to be thrown out of my home country, New York is a pretty great place to land. Is you know I'm something? Saying. It really isn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look for a place to live. I mean, the reason why... Uh, Giller is here, still here, and why I'm still here. Uh, what what kind of rent are you paying, Giller? Uh, I'm not anymore. You're not paying mm -hmm. rent anymore. Yeah, it's it's uh, I'm I'm 73 and rent is free. Wait no. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Are you lying <laughs> to me or? No. Uh... Okay, well, let, let me put it this way. I've got this rent of $500 a month for this apartment. Well, that's, that's I can't less... leave. I, it's impossible for me to leave. I mentioned when I moved here, the rent was $320. That, yeah. that was in 1979. So, yeah, it's the same. I could not afford to live anywhere else. I'd say your oh, rent God. is probably somewhere hovering a little bit above 1000 maybe. Uh, it, uh, Yeah, let's say that. Yeah. Okay. Let's say that. I mean, but it's re it's certainly far cheaper than any rent you could get anywhere in New York City. Yeah. I mean, except, I mean all, except, all of the apartments, except for my place, except for your place. Yeah. 
so so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Trump wins. <laughs> why? Why is that? <laughs> so because you're not going to return. Oh, because I'm not. Oh, I'm not going to come back, and yeah. then you can get this apartment. Hey, now we're thinking. Hey, I'm not giving up this apartment even if we were to move to France. And by, by the way, if we don't come back, it's we're not moving to France. I don't want that, you know. Venezuela's for sale. But Spain, Spain is uh, is a, is a good bet, you know. If I were going to live somewhere, very nice, very nice. Good nice. healthcare there. Huh? So just leave the keys under the mat. I'll leave mm. the keys under the mat. You want? Will you come feed the cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have one, but it, it, I'll it, feed it anyway. We'll buy a cat just so you can come over and feed it. I'll do it. Don't <laughs> even come over. I'll be living there. I yeah. won't be coming over. You can live here. I mean, because the way your place is now, it's just a storage room anyway. Look There's at three, it. Three, three storage rooms. Three storage rooms. Remember, you asked me how how many bedrooms I had, and I said three. Well, I mean, I I meant that I I used to have. I, I used to move my bed from one room to the next. That, that's what that means. Thousand dollars a month. You couldn't even rent a tent in San Francisco for that. Nope. Wow. It no, is. rents are rents are terrible everywhere. Oh, I mean, as somebody New York, who finds in, New York magical, I just gotta say this exchange is so great. Talking about rent control apartments, and I'm never giving up this apartment and all that. That's such a New York thing. Well, they're, they're no longer rent controlled. They're rent stabilized. Rent stabilized. There are, no, there, are, oh, okay. there are so rent. Can only go up a certain amount. If you've been around long enough, okay, there are rent controlled apartments. Control, yeah. We have rent controlled apartments in this building. And what happens, the one thing with rent control is you could will your rent to somebody else. See? Can but then they did, a, they did away with that. Oh. And uh, it's now rent stabilized. Because I was going to change my name to Mike Schwartzman. Yeah. Well, no, this is not a rent-controlled uh, apartment. All right. All right. I'll stay at Chisholm then. The mm. clan can keep me. But I will say that I'm sure that over at the landlord's manse every night, they say a little prayer hoping Marjorie and I drop dead. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, so if you guys had a roommate, could your roommate take over your rent? Only, no. only if that roommate is on the lease. They do that in San Francisco. No, I mean, the I, roommate I, is on the lease, even though he may not be paying anything. If you, the landlord, moves out, he can take over the rent at the current value. I've got a, I've got a plan for this, by the way, and it's an extremely liberal, extremely, uh, extremely uh, progressive idea. You and Marjorie invite a young lady in, and uh, you now have a triad, and now the three of you are married, and there you go. After you and Marjorie. This person has well, done that, their time. That, yeah, that, person, that, situation. that person's not on the lease, however. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. That could be arranged. I mean, I know a notary. Yeah. <laughs> <In Canada. laughs> I'm saying that's a that's a problem that's easily solved. Yeah. Where where does your landlord live? In the apartment complex or somewhere else? Who Alex? our our landlord? Yeah. Brooklyn. Isn't he a scum sucking they, pig like, or something like that? They're like some Hasidim from Brooklyn. Mm. Isn't he a like he's a he's a bit of a daft prick, right? A what? He's a bit of a daft prick. What do you mean a daft prick? Well, didn't he take you to court and wasn't it wasn't there like lawsuits and stuff with this? Oh, guy? there were lo lo lawsuits flying left and right, and we still have problems with him. You know. Yeah. You know, it's it's gotten to the point where I just want it all over with. You know. So, it, it, I mean, it's not like they can throw us out or anything, but it's just we want that, that, that rent written in stone, okay? And they're not willing to accept it, even though the judge said they have to accept it, you know? And then they went to various courts trying to, uh, you know, do the, the old, uh, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? They were trying to appeal. And they lost all their appeals, so the rent stands. But they still won't don't, don't list that with the DHCR as the legal rent of this apartment. So it's it, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, Giller, nice to have you for the whole show. You didn't call during the last five minutes. 
<laughs> Moo. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, Alan, nice having you here. Uh, Kevin, always a pleasure. And of course, Mike Chisholm, quite a pleasant surprise. Yeah, uh, thanks yeah. for letting me crash, guys, and, and thanks for uh, you know allowing me to yeah, kind sure. of blather on. Yeah, and and we didn't get the Joe Rogan, which is the best part. Yeah, nah, that's right. A anyway, everybody, give a big <laughs> wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll uh, have another one assembling. Oh, in a few minutes, right here with Amy Manuel, and you call her on Skype. It's Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to say goodbye for now, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Good night, everybody.